Russia tries to open a new front in Kharkiv but faces a shortage of tanks and armored vehicles. The military aid package from the US to Ukraine, approved in April, has helped the armed forces of Ukraine defend their positions. However, American weapons have not yet halted Russia's advance. The enemy still has the upper hand and will continue attacks, according to American analysts and Ukrainian military officials. According to Rob Lee, a senior fellow in the Foreign Policy Research Institute's Eurasia program, Russia still maintains a significant advantage in manpower and firepower. He believes that the Russian Federation will continue its offensive operations, which will last for most of the year. At the same time, he suggests that Russia may face a shortage of tanks and armored vehicles. The risk of such a shortage arises due to the sufficient quantity of artillery ammunition which Ukraine successfully uses to destroy enemy vehicles. This was stated by Lieutenant Denis Yaroslavsky, who is fighting in the Kharkiv direction. Before, our artillery batteries were being very cautious with the number of shells they could use and would not try to fire at just a few Russian soldiers, he said. In the opinion of Ukrainian and Western military analysts, Russia's strategy to open a new front north of Kharkiv was aimed at stretching Ukraine's limited forces, weakening the defense in Donbass and the south of the country. However, according to Rob Lee, the Russian forces did not benefit from the Kharkiv offensive. Judging by satellite maps, the southern Donetsk region has become the scene of the most intense fighting in recent weeks. The chair of the NATO military committee, Admiral Rob Bauer, believes that Ukraine should be given the right to strike Russian territory with Western weapons without range restrictions. Bauer supported the permission for strikes on Russia using Western weapons from several countries. He explained his position with military logic. In the law of armed conflict, there are no limits in terms of the range. So militarily, again, if the target is deeper into Russia, then militarily you want to target it. For example, aircraft that take off from an airfield deeper into Russia, he said. According to him, increasing the range of Ukrainian weaponry has complicated the logistical support for Russian forces. And if you push back the Russians deeper into Russia, that will make the fight more difficult for them, he noted. Ukraine this morning launched a strike using attack drones against the Mozdok Air Base in the southeast of the Russian Federation, which is located about 800 kilometers from the nearest front line in Ukraine. This airfield is the base for the two 22M3 strategic bombers, as well as the Su-24MR and MiG-31K. The drone attack on North Ossetia is an operation of the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine. The consequences of the attack are being clarified. This airfield is located in North Ossetia. It is known from open sources that a separate 485th helicopter regiment of Russia is based there. Ukrainians know this airfield because MiG-31K aircraft take off from there. They are the carriers of Kinshul missiles and the cause of large-scale air alerts in Ukraine. The last time Russia used these missiles was on May 26, when air defense failed to destroy them. As of the end of April 2024, according to Defense Express, not only MiG-31K aircraft, but also two 22M3 bombers, Su-25M aircraft, and helicopters of various types were spotted at the Mozdok airfield. Russian Defense Ministry said that one drone was allegedly destroyed in North Ossetia last night. The head of the region, Sergei Menyelo, claimed that three drones were destroyed. According to him, the drones were flying to a military airfield. This is probably the Mozdok airfield.